He's definitely came across as ignorant. Um, it was shockingly so how tone deaf that he appeared to be, uh, considering his history, the kind of things that he's done for the community in New Orleans post Hurricane Katrina and beyond his philanthropic efforts throughout the years. I was quite surprised, shocked uh, at his how tone deaf that he was. It was incredibly alarming, very, very disappointing. I definitely think it justified the reaction that he got from his teammates, in particular Malcolm Jenkins. I also want to point out what Richard Sherman said when he talked about him being clearly lost. All of them was right. Eric, you know, Ed Reed, um, I don't agree with, like, calling him names because he called them a sucker and all of that stuff. I didn't think that was necessary, but I understood Ed Reed's point in terms of his frustration because you expected more from Drew Brees, and you didn't get it. But having said all of that, I got news for y'all. This uproar that's been going on nationwide where everybody's going up. Here's what I think everybody's missing. This is a victory for communication. I'm actually, I actually don't mind that this happened because Drew Brees and his actions yesterday were emblematic of a level of tone deafness or, you know, stripping the veil of, of white privilege that we've been lamenting for quite some time. And guess what? This is a win for communication. Because the reality is, is that if you didn't have folks like that out there revealing what they truly, truly feel, then there would still be a plethora of people outside of the black community all over the place asking what y'all upset about. What's the problem? We said that we agree with you. We said that this is wrong. What's the what's the protesting for? What's that? What's that about? They would be asking those questions. You don't get to do that now because just a semblance of what's taking place out there was revealed by Drew Brees yesterday.